Hi guys, welcome to Empower and my name is Caroline Porter Thomas. Thank you so much for joining me on this webinar series. We are talking about empowerment and that is nurse empowerment. Guys, we are in control of this thing right here. I know sometimes it's super hard to stay in control of that. Trust me, I am a victim of my own mind as well, not just you. <laughs> But listen, if we take the steps that we know are necessary to control it, we really can have an amazing life no matter where we are. And this particular video is to help you master where you are right now. By mastering where you are, you are setting the foundation for an empowering future. This is the third video of 11 videos. If you haven't seen the other videos, then you can look below in the description section and see all of the details on how you can watch the other videos. You will also see information because I am having my first ever scholarship and this is to help empower you with the right degree. So if you are an LPN or LVN looking to get your BSN or RN or an RN looking to get your BSN, you have to check this out. There's no strings attached. By filling out the form, you'll be automatically be entered into my scholarship giveaway. So no matter what, let's get right into this program and let's master where we are. I'll see you guys in a bit. Step number three. How mastering your career will not only help your job and your patients, but also yourself. As humans, we are extremely complicated beings. With that said, it's natural to think that if we improve one area, it will stay only in that area. I'm here to tell you that that is not true at all. Improvement in one area of your life means improvement in all areas of your life. There are about six main areas in our lives. They include our physical body, our time, our relationships, our emotions, our finances, and our career. A lot of times you might hear people at work saying that I'm only going to do what's necessary while I'm here and I'm not going to go above and beyond. They might not use those exact words, but they are very reluctant to go beyond what's required of them. And they may think, well that's fine because this is my job and it stays here. But if for 12 hours of the day or 8 hours of the day you're only doing what's necessary to not get fired, then when you go home you'll probably do what's necessary to not get divorced or potentially what's necessary to not get obese. I'm sure that I don't have to tell you that there are many people at your job or your friends that seem to have problems in all areas of their life. So this skimping on the one area has actually hurt the employee far beyond they ever imagined. Not so much the employer, but the employee. Now a lot of times if you tell employees to go above and beyond, they'll argue with you. They'll be like, I'm not getting paid to do more, or if I go above and beyond, they'll leave me here forever. But life in general has a sense of, of drive. I'm telling you right now, it's not possible to go the extra mile and to remain where you are. You will somehow be elevated, whether that be a different position at work, more responsibility at work with hopefully more pay, or different opportunities outside of work. When I learned this, that improving one area was improving all, I made absolute sure that I did the best that I possibly could at work because it meant that I would do the best in every other area. And what I found was that people noticed it. People notice when you do go the extra mile. And they might not notice it at first or they might not say anything at first because maybe they're thinking to themselves, well, is this just a one-time deal? But if you consistently go the extra mile, I promise you, your life will change. So some things that I experienced was after being a nurse for six months, I was asked to precept. After being a nurse for eight months, I was asked to be charge nurse. Now that I was an agency nurse, I noticed that every unit that I go to at least two days in a row, the director's always trying to hire me. And that is because I'm committed to going the extra mile. Not for them, don't get me wrong. I can be very selfish at times. I'm going the extra mile for myself because I know that going the extra mile at my job, yes, it will help my hospital out, which is a good thing, and it will help my unit out, and it will help my coworkers out. But more importantly, it's going to help me be a happier person, a better person, a better wife, a better mother, a better daughter, a better friend, better with finances, better with absolutely everything. So don't do it for your work. Do it for yourself. Just for an example, 
When I give my all at work, I actually leave with more energy. And because I have more energy, I can usually exercise at night with my husband, depending on how early I woke up. So not only did I do a good job at work, and that's going to help elevate me, but then I also get to work out because I feel good. And that also is going to help me as well because it's going to help my body look good. Also, because I have the energy and I'm working with my husband, it's going to help my relationship with him because spending time together, of course, is essential. It will also help my time. If I can work out on the days that I work, then what else can I do on the days that I don't work? Since I don't think it's necessary to work out every single day, then maybe on my days off, I can do other things. So do you see how going above and beyond at your workplace will not just stay there, it will go to so many different areas. I mean, for me to get up here and to kind of inspire you to be a better nurse, it actually comes very natural for me because I know that being a better nurse doesn't just stay in your nursing world. It expands every aspect of you. So you may say to yourself, well, I really want to go the extra mile, but I'm scared that I'm going to be taken advantage of. Well, I'm here to tell you that that's going to happen. When you start going the extra mile, people are going to take advantage of you left and right because you're just being a nice go-getter person. However, what will eventually happen is that other opportunities will come your way. For example, I was working on a nursing unit that really, really did take advantage of me. And I was staffing myself there quite a bit, but then another nursing director kept coming to the floor and, and he was seeing how hard I worked. And then he was also doing rounds on the floor and he could tell that all of my patients loved me. So he came to me and he said, will you start staffing yourself on my unit? I will start pre-booking you. So things like that can happen. Don't get too upset if you're taken advantage of. It's just part of the game, kind of. And also, challenge your beliefs a little bit. Are they really taking advantage of you to get back at you or to, to get out of doing something? Keep in mind, guys, being a nurse, it's a lot of work. There's no way around it. We all work very hard. So challenge your belief a little bit. And you know what? Give everybody the benefit of the doubt. Are they really out there to make your life hard? Or are they just doing what they need to do and, and giving you the most difficult patient on the floor because every other nurse has already had them this week? So challenge yourself to see the good in people. And this also applies. You're not challenging yourself to see the good in people to let them get off easy. You're challenging yourself to see the good in people to clear your mind, to clear your conscience, to make sure that your thoughts are positive so that you can be the best person that you can be. Okay guys, in this exercise, you're going to write down three things that you can do to improve your job, knowing fully that these improvements will not just stay there. Your life will elevate because of it. Have fun, and I'll see you in the next section.